All right, so we just discussed cell mediated immunity. That's through T lymphocytes. T lymphocytes are better at fighting internal antigens, so looking at our cell cells that are corrupt, and they require antigen presentation. So now we're over here on the humoral side. And the humoral side, what we get from that is antibody production, so our immunoglobulins. And so these are better at attaching to things that are extracellular, so uh, free bacteria or toxins or virus particles to something outside of your cells. All right, so B cells are made in the bone marrow. They mature in the bone marrow and they make antibodies. It's a lot of Bs. Keep your Bs together. Keep your Ts from your Bs, okay? Um, B cells will also go through a selection process in the red bone marrow to make sure that they are not reactive to self-antigens because the last thing we want is a B cell making antibodies to our self tissues, okay? That's basically, in essence, autoimmune disease. So the ones that don't respond to self, they will be released from the bone marrow and like I said, this process of screening is called central tolerance. So then they get their receptor. Their receptor uh, looks like an antibody molecule and it's immunoglobulin D. And it's gonna be specific for one antigenic determinant or epitope on a larger antigen. So antibodies are Y-shaped immunoglobulins. Like I said, we use them for blood typing. They are made up of four polypeptide chains, so four chains of amino acids, two large chains, so they're called heavy chains, and two light chains. The Y shape that they have, so up here, so the hands, this is what's gonna be variable, and this is what's gonna be specific for the antigen. Okay, and so it will have a binding site that's gonna be, have the right shape and the charge to match that antigen, just like a puzzle piece or just like a key inside a lock. And so it has that specificity. So this part is called the fragment of antigen binding. The stem part is fragment of crystallization, but it is a flag for the immune system. So the stem part interacts with the rest of the immune system. So it's called the FC region. The cells that are gonna make antibodies are going to be B cells that have become activated, then they become plasma cells and they look like deviled eggs. If we were gonna have food, I would serve deviled eggs today. Uh, this is what they look like when they're not activated. So all lymphocytes look alike. And then they get all the cytoplasm and ribosomes and Golgi apparatus, and they can secrete thousands of antibody molecules per second once they're activated. Your ability to make an antibody that's specific for a particular antigen is genetic. So either you've got cells to make antibodies to something or you don't. One plasma cell will make an antibody that's specific for one antigenic determinant. Um, B cells, because they can become activated and then they just secrete these proteins that are soluble, they don't migrate as much. It's like the T cells, we just watch it. They have to crawl all over the cells. So in peripheral blood, about 80% of the lymphocytes are actually T lymphocytes. Okay, they, the B cells can just post up in lymphatic tissue and just secrete their antibodies into lymph and tissue fluid and in the blood. So the antibodies do the traveling, not the B cell. There are five different classes of antibody. And what's different about the classes is this stem part, so this SC part. This is the part that can activate complement or act as an opsonin. And this stem part also determines sort of the function and location of these antibodies. The majority, so 80% of the antibodies are IgG, which stands for immunoglobulin G. It is the classical Y shape that you see, okay? So it can bind to two antigens, and it is the type that is capable of opsonization. It is capable of activating complement. The other thing, when we discussed hemolytic disease of the newborn, these are the antibodies that can cross the placenta, and these antibodies will also give passive immunity to the infant when the infant is born. So the infant at least has mom's antibodies inside and is not completely without any immune protection. 
The next one is called immunoglobulin A, and if you could just remember secretory IgA, you will get there. It is a dimer, so two antibody molecules stuck together, and this is going to be in the secretions on our mucosal surfaces. Remember, the mucous membranes are internal linings. Okay, so it's going to be a mucus, tears, saliva, and also secretions like breast milk and colostrum. So if a mother chooses to breastfeed, she will still be giving passive immunity to her baby to protect that baby from infection in the gastrointestinal tract. IgM is mega big, and it is the one we use for blood typing. Notice it looks like a snowflake. It is five antibody molecules, so it has 10 hands. So it can hold on to 10 antigens at once. The other thing about IgM is the first one made when someone first gets an infection. Plasma cells will make an antibody to a specific antigen, but they can switch the classes. Okay, they can switch out the stem part. It too is capable of activating complement. All right, so IgA, if you remember secretory IgA, you got it. So it's in your secretions. Um, so mucus is protective, one, because it's sticky, and then two, it also has antibodies in the mucus. And so IgA defends our portals of entry for pathogens. IgG is the big deal. Yep, it's, it, the majority of them are going to be IgG, and they're the ones that can cross the placenta. So just kind of showing you when a baby is born, an infant is born, they have mom's IgG antibodies. Antibodies are proteins. The blood's going to get filtered by the liver and the kidney, so they don't stay around forever. So you see mom's antibodies go down. Um, there's, oops, so there's mom line. Mom's antibodies go down. The baby just got on the planet, so it hasn't had time to activate its immune response, but it starts right away. And so you see the, the infant IgG in the blood goes up, but maternal goes down. So from the first few months of life, babies are really susceptible to infection. I mean, they're just, they don't have an immune system. IgA can be given, like I said, through secretions, colostrum, and uh, the first milk, and then breast milk. IgD makes the B cell receptor. So it makes, helps the B cell destroy, if that helps. There's not a lot of it circulating. IgE, we'll talk about at the end of our day, causes allergies. Um, it is going to be that stem part is an IgE stem, and so it, uh, that stem inserts into mast cells and basophil cells, which cause inflammation. And so I'll connect that. But there's different classes, and the classes just determine the shape of it, where is it located in the body. We'll talk about allergies. What antibodies do is they neutralize things and target them for destruction. So anything that's coated in antibodies, it's gone, okay? Um, and we can trade antibodies. Uh, we just had a pandemic and giving antibodies to COVID is a treatment for some patients that were having a hard time recovering from the disease. So they stick to their antigen and like a virus particle, if it's covered, it can't infect. We did agglutination, so we'll be doing blood typing. And if something's all clumped in the body, your immune cells will see it. If it's something small, it also helps the immune system to recognize it. So if something's recognizable, it's going to be eaten, and antibodies act as opsonins. They also activate complement, and we learn from complement, we get enhanced phagocytosis, inflammation, and then we get our membrane tech complex. So like I said, antibodies themselves aren't toxic. You could drink them, okay? But as soon as they stick to something, that thing's gone. Like, it, it neutralizes it, and that's why, you know, your antibodies get measured for, you get a titer to see if you're immune to things. Usually, if you have antibodies to something, you're good. Antibodies also activate natural killer cells. So if there's antibodies stuck to a cell cell, remember, natural killers, like, they don't ask questions. Like, eh, you got antibodies, good enough. All right, so which part in this picture does the antigen bind, A, B, or C? Nice. Which part determines where the antibody is and interacts with the immune system? C. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so this is the variable part, interacts with the antigen, so antigen binding. This part down here activates complement and acts as an opsonin. So um, through complement and phagocytosis, whatever that's covering, it's gone. 
All right, so how does humoral immunity work? The immune system can produce antibodies against millions of different antigens. B cells, which are constantly produced from lymphoid stem cells, are found in the blood and lymphoid tissues. Each B cell can synthesize only one of the millions of possible antibodies and displays this antibody on its surface. When an antigen meets a B cell, having a surface antibody of the proper specificity, it complexes with the antibody. B cells that are not activated do not develop further. Stimulation of only the B cells that carry antibodies that react with antigen is referred to as clonal selection. Following antigen-antibody interaction, antigen-antibody complexes aggregate on the surface of the cell. This is called capping. The antigen-antibody complexes are then internalized. The activated B cell swells and begins to divide rapidly, producing a B cell clone. The B cells then differentiate into plasma cells and memory cells. Plasma cells produce the specific antibody that provoked its formation, whereas memory cells remain in circulation but do not produce antibodies. Memory cells can become activated by a later challenge by the same antigen. Many antibody responses require signals from T helper cells. The T helper cell is stimulated by an interaction with an antigen presenting cell such as a macrophage. The macrophage ingests the antigen, digests it, and presents it on the cell surface via a class 2 MHC. The macrophage then activates a T helper cell that carries a T cell receptor capable of recognizing the antigen on the class 2 MHC of the macrophage. The B cell presents the antigen on its surface using class 2 MHC. The activated T helper cell interacts with the B cell and secretes chemical signals called interleukins to stimulate the B cell to differentiate into a plasma cell and produce antibodies. All right, so in your lymphatic tissue, you have a whole repertoire of naive B cells and B cells that each recognize one particular antigen. That selection or matching up of antigen with the right lymphocyte is called clonal selection. And this is kind of what takes time when the immune system is naive because you have to find the right lymphocyte. We looked at lymphoid tissue in lab and it's just tons of lymphocytes in there, okay? So it takes some time as like lymph trickles through a lymph node for the antigen to find the right one. So there's this lag or latent period to activate the immune system the first time and usually people get sick, okay? But that process is called clonal selection. And like I said, it usually happens in secondary lymphoid organs like lymph nodes, spleen, tonsils, mucosa associated lymphoid tissue like payers, patches, appendix. And then we didn't really talk about it, but you also have lymphatic tissue underneath the skin, so salt, okay? But it that meeting the right lymphocyte because we need the right uh, lymphocyte to do the job takes time. <laughs>
So the second time, you probably don't get sick. Okay, so that's when the memory cells are recruited, and then they will also leave more memory cells behind. Okay, so every time you get a bigger army to that infectious agent. The first time someone is exposed to something is called the primary immune response. And like I said, there's this lag period. If your immune system's never seen it, we got to get the antigen to bump into the right lymphocyte, and then that one has to like proliferate, and then it has to become a plasma cell and make antibodies. And so it just takes time. So odds are the first time, like babies, they get sick a lot. Kids get sick a lot uh, because they don't have any immune protection. The first antibody made is immunoglobulin M, and then we get class switching to immunoglobulin G. This, we can uh, initiate this primary response through vaccination as well, and so we do that to a lot of our more deadly diseases. The second time, third time, fourth time, fifth time, we don't count to say secondary immune response because of those memory cells. Notice there's no latent or lag period, and the response is gonna be much stronger than the primary response. And so you have immunity, which means you were exposed to it, but you didn't get sick. There's no disease, okay? There's still gonna be some IgM8, but the general class, the number one that's in circulation is immunoglobulin G. So we talked about cell-mediated immunity through cytotoxic T cells, and we talked about humoral immunity and antibody production through B lymphocytes. The T helper cell was the, the intermediate, is necessary, right? It's the general of the army, the talker, for both an effective cell-mediated immune system and both a humoral immune system. This is the cell that is infected by HIV, the virus that causes AIDS. When someone is HIV positive, they don't have AIDS immediately. That can go be over the course of years. But when they are, when they then get, they lose their immune system is when their T helper cell drops to 200 cells per microliter or below. Like that's just too few to have cell-mediated immunity or to have humoral immunity. So they don't have cytotoxic T cells and they don't make antibodies. And so they die of an opportunistic infection. And so it is the most important cell in the immune system.